We met through a mutual friend. We became very close. I really care for Heather. She's like a sister to me. I guess a lawsuit must be pretty tough. The money you loaned him, it wasn't to pay for Botox. Yes, it was. It worked better on you than you, I <laughs> He never paid on time. That is completely incorrect, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Argod is very unprofessional, an extremely shady individual. He's Mission. lying. No, I'm not lying, Your Honor. He is lying. He is incorrect. Well, one of you is not telling the truth here. Plaintiff Heather Field claims she loaned her friend money when he was down on his luck. But when it was time to pay it back, he said he's flat broke. She's suing for $4,800. Defendant James Groden claims major spinal surgery and a shady financial advisor the plaintiff set him up with have drained his bank account. He says he owes her nothing. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay. I do. Thank you. The Honorable Judge Jerry Springer now presiding. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Najee. How are you? Doing well, Judge. Good. It's case number 012 on the docket, Fields versus Grodin. Nice to have you here, even if it's under these circumstances. And let's find out about this. What I have here is the plaintiff, Heather Field, and you are suing your friend, James Grodin, for $5,000 for a personal loan. Correct, Your Honor. How, how'd you guys meet? We met like over like 12 years ago through a mutual friend. You know, I, we became very close and we used to, uh, you know, do a lot of things together, like vacation, I would take care of his mom. Oh, well, so, so this is really a, a, a close relationship. Like a sister to me, correct. So I guess a lawsuit must be pretty tough. But why don't you tell me your side of it and then we'll, we'll see. Okay. When I met Jimmy, he was very well put together. He's very generous, but he also was very frivolous, okay? Yeah. And How would you describe his frivolous? He would just, like, if you were with Jimmy, he would just spend money, like, on everybody. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, he didn't cook at all. Everyone, yeah. like, and it was, like, it's great to be generous, but there comes a time where you need to, like, be responsible yeah. and put your foot It'd down. be like taking people you work with out to dinner. Yeah, breakfast, <laughs> lunch, and dinner. Why you are know? you laughing, Najee? It's not a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, it's a good characteristic <laughs> trait, yeah. but, like, okay. you know, so... You know, I think, you know, he had, like, some issues and, you know, that's personal, but he had asked me last year if he could, uh, you know, borrow some money because he was a little behind on his bills because, you know, he had some situations. And I What said, kind of bills was he behind on? He was behind on his rent. Rent, okay. Yeah. You know, Jimmy likes to shop, too, so, you know, he doesn't really have the responsibility of, of the did dollar. You, <laughs> did you buy that shirt? I did buy the shirt. Yes, I did. <laughs> you like my shirt? <laughs> Somewhere there's a Holiday Inn without a curtain. <laughs> no, that's just... That's not nice. No. Yeah. No, just, go ahead. So, you know, Jimmy's like the life of the party, as you can see, you know. But, yeah. you know, you heard Jimmy, and when Jimmy has a dollar, he'll spend his last dollar, and just as long as he's having a good time. Yeah. And then, you know, push comes to shove, it. after the good time, it's like, what am I going to do? So I helped him out because he has, you know, investments and he invested money with a financial advisor and he was getting his return every month with the interest and I said no problem he was supposed to pay me back in December and December came and th this forty eight hundred dollars was for medical bills because I have several surgeries. medical bills yes what, I had, what, had several surgeries over the last year I have major spine surgery and you're October doing 31st. fine now were th those the only medical bills were there I do have some. I, my Aetna, um, I got into a new program with my prescriptions, and they, they have an help, extra help program. So the corneal wheel, they had, they had, um, oh, well, yeah. they reduced most of my, my, my bills, and I'm doing much better in that department. But the rent situation at that time was behind. Your, and, your Honor. Yes. Also, during that time, we had a little spa day, oh, and wait, I treated I'm Jimmy looking. to some Botox and some That fillers. was my surgery, yeah. Okay, oh, oh, all right, so, so I see, that I, that's your spinal surgery. Right, seven hour surgery, yes. Sir. Wow. October 31st. So where does the Botox come in? Well, this, this uh, surgery was before the loan, after the loan. This is way after the loan. I'm just talking about what he owed me the money for, okay? Okay, and so the, the money you loaned him was basically for the rent, but it wasn't to pay for Botox. Yes, it was. Well, it, it worked better on you than you. I, I, <laughs> So as you can see in Exhibit C, we have here, you can see $2,000, okay? And there's one for seven fifty. dollars It was a split between because we both got some Botox and a little, a little plumper. 
And that was before his surgery and before that situation happened. So I find that the surgery really should not have anything to do with why he's not paying me back. The loan was for the rent, for the Botox. And as you can see also in Exhibit A, we have a, I mean Exhibit B, we have a check for $100 for just for like spending money. Because, you know, we, we like to shop at times. And Jimmy likes, you know, to spend money. He's a very good um, host. So it seems like you two are very, very good friends. What are these texts that... That's what I would like to get started with. At okay, why don't you tell me that part okay. and I'll get back to okay. you. Heather, yes, has been a very good friend. Um, she did also refer me to this financial advisor quote that we she discussed a minute ago. Yes. And this financial advisor has taken over $100,000 of my money, but that is it my fault. I invested reviews. with him. She didn't stick a gun in my back, of course. So it was a decision I made as an adult, and I have to suffer the consequences. But she did know that I, I couldn't pull money out of the sky. I mean, I'm on Social Security disability. And that was, that's part of my income every month. You know, then I also hear from the grapevine of, you know, through gossip, through mutual friends that, you know, like, you're like, oh, Jimmy's not going to pay you back. And, you know, so there has been like this friction caused between like other third parties, like intervening with our friendship. But and then he would not call me and I would call him like and not return my phone calls. So I would feel that he was just not like going to pay me back and avoid me. But I felt she knew that I, 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 I really care for Heather. I say this, she's like a sister to me. I have no family members, and she has been very good to me. Heather has been like a sister that I never had. Yeah. So the thing is, a month and a half ago, about a month ago, I received an unclaimed funds check of $2,000. The first thing I did, I walked by her new apartment. I had to find out where she lived. She was standing outside, thank God. And I handed her $500,000. 500. dollars <laughs> I handed her $500. That is a will. good friend. Oh, my good God. Guy, right? That is a I'm good sorry. friend. In goodwill, I, I wanted like to pay her. That's, and that's I wanted to start a payment dinner. schedule. That's because better than that. dinner. I'm sorry. That's, that's nice. I'm sorry. Okay. And I did give her the $500. No question. And I was so excited to do that. And we started resuming our friendship yes. at that point. And we're trying to get, and she knows I am really trying to get the money from this man. Here's what I see. Obviously, you two have a great history. That's clear. You, you, good friends. You could win this case and lose a friend. You said you will pay her back. Things happen in life. People lose their jobs. COVID is going on right now. There's no lack of sympathy here. And a good friend might very well say, I know times are tough. You had the surgery, COVID, and this guy, as you say, screwed you over. Excuse me, Ronnie, there's other ways you can get money. Like, you can also, like, work a side job. You can sell things on eBay or, you know, whatever it is that you need to do. But now we're going into your friendship. I'm not going to rule on your friendship. You have to decide that. And you have to decide... If when he gets money, he pays you back something, mm -hmm. that's good. It shows what his intent is. The chances are he's, his luck isn't always going to be bad. He'll be able. But aren't, you have to make that decision. You have to decide whether you want to save this friendship. Was there an agreement? We had an I agreement. I mean, a, a written agreement. A written agreement. I mean, it wasn't through a lawyer, but we had a verbal and a contractual written agreement that we both created in July. And do you have that? Yes, I do. That would be in Exhibit D. Exhibit D. Okay, let me see. This is to note that Jimmy Groden is borrowing $4,800 for a loan. <laughs> I will pay her back in full by December 15th of 2020. Legally... Things happen in life. You signed this. Correct. You know, people lose their jobs, for example, in the middle of the COVID thing. It doesn't mean that their obligation is not there anymore. It's that it gets put off sometimes temporarily. Right. You will decide how much you want to forgive of that. But if you're coming to this court, mm -hmm. you're entitled to a legal decision. And the legal decision is your suit for... $4,800 is now, I assume, reduced to 4300 because Correct. you paid 500 Correct. So I fined for the plaintiff for $4,300. Thank you. I feel secure and I'm satisfied with the resolution, you know, that was decided today. I just saw her smile on the way out and I feel that our friendship will be renewed.
and much stronger starting today. I feel that my friendship with Jimmy after, after this um, experience will probably grow a little bit more intense and more of a family bond, but he also needs to realize his responsibilities to life in general and not have to put his friends or family through this. Plaintiff Argad Janini claims the defendant rented his rideshare vehicle but never paid for tolls. He's suing for $5,000. Defendant Hassan Adil claims the plaintiff is a crook and a liar who forged his signature. Right he says he owes nothing. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Thank you. The Honorable Judge Jerry Springer now presiding. Good morning, Your Honor. Morning, Najee. This is case 020 on the docket, Janini versus Adil. Okay, let's see what we have here. The plaintiff, Argad Janini. Correct. You are suing the defendant, Hassan Adil, for $5,000 for unpaid tolls and parking violations. Yes, Your uh, Honor, I'm suing Hassan Adil uh, for unpaid tolls yes. and tickets. I hired him. I, I used to drive as an Uber driver in New York City, and I ha hired him because I had an accident. Yes. Normally, I used to drive by myself, but I had an accident driving all, like 60 hours a week. Yes. So I had to look for uh, somebody else to drive uh, instead of me. Yes. So I looked around my friends and stuff like this. All of them, they were uh, busy, they were working. So I had to go with the Craigslist, uh, the um, Craigslist. Craigslist, yes. yeah. I, um, I bought an ad, and the first who called uh, my uh, uh, Hassan Adil, yes. he called me, so I told him, okay, we agreed upon, and I went all the way to. Uh, so, just so I have it straight, this was a car that you owned. You used to be an Uber, Uber driver? driver, yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's a TLC thing in, uh, in New York City. Yeah, oh, Taxi yeah. and limousine commercial. Oh, sure, I know. Uber, yeah. yeah. But so, you couldn't drive because of an accident, yes. so, so you decided to rent your car out that someone else would drive. Correct. So uh, the ad said that whoever rented the car would have to pay you $375 a Correct. week. Correct. Was there a formal contract? There was no formal contract. He had to uh, write, like at the um, uh, Notary Public office. Y yes. That he is responsible about the uh, ticket, and the uh, he mentioned some. Uh, I mean the uh, uh, collection agencies, the, the tolls. The tolls, yeah, no, no. because it went from I mean the tolls yeah. to collection agency because he never paid them on time. Uh, that is completely incorrect, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Argad is very unprofessional, an extremely shady individual. I did pay a lot of those tolls. A Your lot, Honor. but yes. What about those you there didn't is, pay? There is an evidence, like a voice. A voice. Okay, let's see. Uh, well, what so item is that? Says that exhibit. What item is that? And and do we have on. the recording? Take a listen to the recording. recording. Sorry, yeah. What I'm going to do is the tolls that I didn't pay for uh, November or December or January, whatever tolls that I did not pay, I'm going to pay those tolls. And what they're going to do is they're going to dismiss all of the violations. So let me call them and let me speak to them, okay? Yes, and I did pay can those it, tolls. Can I speak? Your yes, order? no. Was he sending you, giving you money to pay for some of these tickets? No. Yes, I you no. never Don't got any never. money for any ticket? Never. And well, I one swear, of you is not telling the truth here. Yeah. Where is your evidence? Your Honor, I have the evidence Where? right here. Okay. Exhibit B. Let me look at it. Okay. Deposit into Argad's wife's account. Exactly. Go bank. That's from the Uber account that I have. 593. Correct. That's for the easy pass. And he didn't mention the Easy Pass was not working at some point, and I told him that I will your, call your Easy Honor, Pass and replenish he's it. Lying. No, I'm not lying, Your Honor. He is lying. He is incorrect. He, it's in front lying. of you. And this is why did you want? Why did you want cash payments if I'm from lying? From Notary Public says that he, I'm, I'm going to pay the, the tolls. I did not, not sign anything. All right, the, the judge. All right. Okay. If it's five hundred and ninety-three dollars, that, supposed, that is, sir, the judge is speaking. That is not. Sorry that's hardly all the tolls, right? No, no, that's just a portion of the tolls. I don't have, in, the, uh, I didn't print out the more, um, the rest of the evidence well, that I was yeah. going to bring so, with you. That's what can I have to make a decision on. Can, yes. Can I, can I, can I ask a question here? What? Your Honor, 
how come he pay me this time, 500, whatever that he claimed before he didn't pay me, and he start, I mean, he, he used to cover the toll directly. Now he jumped into my account and my wife's account to pay me. You told me to put on your wife's account. You no, you I told didn't me. tell you anything. Yes, you did. You're lying. No. You're a liar, man. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm you not are, lying. You are the a shady person. never received any pity from him. You are a shady person, This is my a standard thing. He's How supposed to be. How would he know your wife's account number? We have a joint account in between us, me and my wife. Yeah. I, there is nothing hidden here. So he, he said put it into my wife's account and I, I just give me the cash every week. Okay. Him and his wife were saying something in Arabic and they said oh. to me that we want the car back today and they took my stuff, my gym clothes, my books, and they forcefully told me to take off and throw it out, 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 out of the car and told me that I cannot drive the car anymore. That is very unprofessional coming from someone okay. that is giving you their car. Rem remember that I'm not a professional businessman or a hiring uh, I know uh, you're my not. vehicle. I know you're not. It's my right. vehicle. So I know you're yeah. not. And I, I had to not. hire the to personal rent attacks. Okay. okay, the personal attacks aren't necessary, both of you. Yes. Okay, so, so here's the deal. So your, hi your, uh, your honor. Uh, your this highness is works. Exhibit, exhibit <laughs> A. So, <laughs> sorry for that. Don't exhibit you think? A. No to Republic. I did not sign Republic. anything, he Your Honor. Signed. I did not, I give him, I did not no, sign right. anything. The judge is speaking. Oh, yeah, you when a notary signs, I did not uh -huh. sign that, Your Honor. when a notary signs, under the law, she, ha the person who is signing mm -hmm. the document has to show identification. There was no So if there. someone else other than you signed your name, that person would have been, had your you, you're, uh, I wasn't there, Your Honor. So I was you're not saying there. someone else has your identification? No, they don't. Yeah, that well, is not my signature. It makes no sense for anyone to rent their car out and to not have the person who is driving it be responsible for the tolls and any penalties for not for late payment or not payment. What I would say to you, if you ever do this again is you better make no. it clear in the document. What I would say to you, because you do drive, you must know that when they're told, you're gonna have to pay for it. But I can't hold the owner of the car responsible for the tolls that are brought by the guy he's rented the car to. No one would ever rent a car because they would lose money every single week. I fine for the plaintiff in the sum of $5,000. Such kind of unprofessional behavior by him and his wife was really, um, you know, unbelievable. The driver's supposed to pay because some, it's, a standard, it's a standard thing in between the driver and the owner. I feel that I was not responsible fully for whatever happened today. Hey, YouTube, thanks for watching. For more Judge Jerry, click here. For more Jerry Springer, click here.